Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of the Honey and Milk Podcast. I'm your host, Bernie Stauda. If you are new here, welcome, get comfortable. If you're a returning viewer, nice to have you back. This is a space where we, sp- we speak about all things, um, Bible, scriptures, Jesus, our life experiences, all for the goal for us to know Christ better and order f- in order for us to become more like Christ every day, right? So, hi. <laughs> welcome 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 get comfortable so love 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 it's a very common word we talk about is concerning the movies we like the foods we eat the people we care about we all like to express and say i love that we love that she loves that um so if there's any i'm pretty sure you can already tell from the title that today we'll be talking about love And you'll be thinking, like, February has passed, you know? Valentine's has passed. The month of love has passed. We're in March, for God's sakes. (laughs) Why are we still going back to the topic of love? Um, A simple answer to that would be, like, love doesn't have a season. It doesn't have a time in the year where we get to talk about it. It is... It is constant. It is a constant thing. Um, It doesn't fade. I'm already kind of getting into what we're going to talk about today, So I'm not going to go further. (laughs) But what I will tell you to do is that if you have not subscribed, what are you doing? (laughs) Subscribe. (laughs) Subscribe, leave a like, and let's dive into the five uncommon things people, or rather we don't tend to know or keep in the forefront of our mind when it comes to love that are actually very, very, very important when it comes to love. And all I'm going to be saying, the five things I'm going to be talking about today, of course, there could be more. And it doesn't negate the other common things that we do know about, even though it is kind of going to negate some, but it's not going to negate all of them. But they are very common things and rather they are very uncommon things or things that I don't really see when it's being spoken about when it comes to like love, you know, when you're watching or listening to love stories and um, movies and love songs they're all like you rock my world <laughs> but, but you know there are some things that are actually very 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 important when it comes to love but we don't talk about it and i'm here to talk about it <laughs> all the five things have a corresponding scripture to it so i'll do my best to also read out the scripture as well and let's dive right into it right the number one thing is love constraints so this wouldn't be a surprise to you if you have seen the post i did on the at the end of february and i think that's even why i'm doing today's videos because um at the end of it i was like oh if you guys want me to explain more about it just right i think there was a comment you guys were supposed to write (laughs) and i got one response and that one response is very important so thank you so much for responding for all that you do to keep this conversation moving so these five things are actually going to be very similar are actually the same thing as those things i'm just going to be explaining them more than what i did in the post so love constraints the scripture for that is second give me a moment let me get my nifty little bible app <laughs> uh so love constraints second corinthians 5 verse 14 All right it says for the love of christ this version says compels us since we have reached this conclusion that one died for all and therefore all died um i want us to read this is csb but if you go to the kjv version it's going to say for the love of christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all then we are all dead um the word constraints you can already kind of have a hint of it by the CSB version of it where it says compels us. So to constrain something is to keep it bound in a certain limit or in a certain range that 
the there's a limitation basically that's what i'm trying to say the word constraints just points to the fact that there is a limitation that a person or a thing or a set of people or an organization or something um has it has a limitation and love tends to set limitations um we can see it's between a romantic relationship that they have decided to be exclusive it sets a limitation that either parties are not allowed to um be entangled with someone else and in the in the phase i'm guessing like during the relationship if one of them steps out and then decides to be sneaky it tends to have a breach of trust it tends to create a breach of trust so this is what love constraints means it means that love is actually going to constrain you um a lot of the all right let me not say a lot i might be starting to exaggerate a bit but i would say a number uh, quite a number of love songs love movies are all like you know oh love is freeing and everything like yes love is freeing but it is freeing in the constraints that it, you are free to do <laughs> It sounds like a paradox, but it's actually true. The love of Christ actually constrains us. So now I'm bringing it to the dimension or rather to the aspect of us being Christians or saying, I love you, God. And we declare with our mouths, oh God, I love you. I will do anything for you. But then we have refused to be constrained by his commands. He literally says in his word that if you love me, you will obey my command my commandments right and that is us allowing the love of christ to constrain us to compel us to be to to understand that although everything is um allowed but not all things are beneficial there is going to be a focus to what we are called to do or the focus of the things that we are allowed to or rather you allow yourself to do and it's 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 a very it's not a common thing that I hear. Um, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's, it's rather, it's not a sweet thing to hear when you hear that, oh, the love constraints, you would start to think like you're locked in a prison or you're bound by something. No, it's just that you allow yourself to be constrained by your love and for your love for a person especially when it comes to the love of christ and also to other people as well your love for someone will most likely constrain you not to do some things that you want to do your love for your child will constrain you from acting a fool outside you know that like when you're with your child you're not going to just allow anything and everything come across your path you're going to be constrained in order to realize that there is a child that you care and you pre- you want to protect your love for your child will allow you to be constrained in some of the things that you want to do is the same thing going like is the same thing for re- romantic relationships for friendships as well there will be something that if you truly love someone you would want to protect that person you would want to you would think about that person and you would want to be kind towards that person and for instance let's say you have a friend and you take that person's business so like you guys have a vulnerable moment she or he opens up to you tells you some things that he or she had to go through that he hasn't opened up to anyone else and because you guys are friends he's letting he or she's letting you know if you really do love and care about that person you would not then turn and then broadcast that thing all over it's a different thing if you know that this is something that the person needs to seek help for and is particularly being stubborn about it i would say that there are still ways for you to go through that um process that would not hurt that person you don't just go and start opening your mouth to any jack and jill especially if you say that you care you love about this person it will constrain you in the things that you can talk about it will constrain you in the way you even act towards that person if a loved one comes to you and says how you talk to me hurts me i know that sometimes there are habits that we do that it's not that easy to break out of it and then i understand that aspect but then at the same time you will try 
you will actually allow yourself to be constrained in order for you to understand and not want to hurt the person. So that is what I mean by love constraints. And that is what I understand by love constraints in Second Corinthians 5 verse 14. Of course, there is still the B part of it. So I'm still very focused on the A part. For the love of Christ constraineth us. But then there's not the other, the, the continual part of it. It says, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. Um, there's a particular saying, um, I, I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase it. It says, dead men don't judge, no, no not dead men don't judge, but um, dead men don't react. So there are some things as a Christian that if... <laughs> If you're still agitated about it, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's as I speak to you, I'm still on this journey. But there are some certain things you do and there are some certain hurts you come across and there are some certain insults and situations you will be in that when you realize that you are a dead man in Christ, you will just calm down. That's the best way to say it. A dead man don't react. Um... And it's just, uh, once again, this is my understanding of it. Because if you realize that the love of Christ constrains you to do some certain things, you also, as a dead person in Christ, will not react to some certain things. Yeah. So number two. <laughs> number two. Love is not an emotion, but love is a person. Or rather, is a personality or an entity. And for that, we're going to go to John 4, 1 John 4, verse 8. 1 John 4, verse 8. So, 1 John 4, verse 8, KJV says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So, KJV likes to make things very orishi rishi. Oh, that's a Nigerian slang. <laughs> If you're not Nigerian, pardon me. Um, Orishi Rishi, the best way to describe that would be it likes to bedazzle things. That's how, that's how I use the slang Orishi Rishi. If I'm using it wrong, my pardon, pardon me. But it just likes to sometimes bedazzle English. Um, we commoners <laughs> like simpler versions sometimes. Uh, so NIV says, 1 John 4 verse 8, NIV says, Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So God is love. God is not an emotion. Sorry. Yeah, God is not an emotion. Love is not an emotion. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> because love is God. And um, there was a time that, I think there was a time that I was just meditating on this and as I was speaking to God in my heart concerning it he pointed to me that you cannot if you say I love God that is you saying I got God there is no way for you to love God without God there is no way for you to love anybody or anything without God and I mean that love in the sense because there are also different aspects of love that we see um you know, love between friendships, there's filia love, ludos, agape, all of those loves. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not saying that there isn't a differential love. And um, I don't know how to put it. I'm not saying that there isn't a difference between the kind of love-like emotions that we have towards certain people. But what I'm saying is that for you to truly and honestly love somebody, like, I would call it agape love, because that's what they describe as true love. And in order for you to truly love anybody in the right way, where it's not becoming obsession, where it's not codependence, where it's not something weird, Just, yeah. <laughs> in order for you to truly love someone and want the best for them, you cannot do it without God. Actually, I, I, I think like that's something not really not. It's an uncommon thing because we tend to go along with our emotions and be like, "Oh, I love this person. I can't live without this person." And then those 
same people that are like, yeah, I'll be with you till the end of time. It comes to a time that they don't want to be with each other. Why? That's because the feeling or the emotion uh, of love as described as love has faded. And But that was not love. That was not true love. That was not... Um, that was not love in the terms of God's love towards that person. And God is love. You cannot say you love a person. Now I'm coming back to being a Christian. You cannot say you love God without God. You cannot say you love a person without God. You cannot say you love yourself without God. Because if you don't put God inside it, it will quickly turn into something else. It's the same thing um, if you say, I, you know, the Bible verse that says um, the two great commandments, love God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your might, all your strength. And then the second one, just um, the second greater commandment that says, love your neighbor as thyself. And then because of those commandments, we'll not be like, oh, you have to love yourself in order to love your neighbor well, you know. And I'm not negating that once again. <laughs> all these things is not to negate anything. But it is to point to a greater love. If you do not love yourself in the way that God has prescribed for you to love you, or in the in God's love towards yourself, it will very quickly turn into pride. It will very quickly turn into vanity. Very quickly. If you do not love your neighbor in the in the way that God wants you to love that person, in God's kind of love. It will very quickly turn into codependency. It will very quickly turn into, um, the word doesn't come to me, but it's like you being a, a mat. Like, I don't know how to put it. You will, you will start to want, um, acknowledgement. Like you, you would find your entirety in somebody else, in somebody else's life than rather in God. I don't know if I'm trying to, if I'm really explaining and coming across the way it's in my head, but in everything, in loving ourselves, in loving things, in loving people, in loving um, God, you cannot do it without God. God is love and it is him that will show you how to love properly, right? And then... um, um, this is not part of what I have here. It's not part of what I have here, but another great way for you to... I'll say the litmus test of love will be found in Second Corinthians 13. Let me see if I got that right. Um, so, oof, sorry. Second Corinthians 13. Oof, no, I don't think this is it. Hey, then <laughs> it will be First Corinthians thirteen. My my apologies. Yes, it's First Corinthians thirteen. I got the number in front of the Corinthians wrong, and I'm not going to. It's very short. It's like thirteen chapters. Yeah, let's read it. I wasn't sure if we'll read it, but let's read it. So I will call this the litmus test of love. If you say you love something, if you say you love God, if you say you love anything, if you love yourself, you have to do it in the litmus test of 1 Corinthians 13. And chapter 1 says, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth, it always protects always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completedness comes, what is in part disappears. 
When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we, o- we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So that is a chapter, I would say, if you want to understand love better, if you want to know how to love better, you would have to, you would have to understand this chapter well (laughs) all right then number three number three love does not fade oof yeah so let me just jump right into the scripture for that that is john first john 13 verse 8 first john 13 verse 8 eh what am i doing (laughs) let's say first john 3 verse 8 no that's not it i'm so sorry i think i've misplaced my scripture but let me just take a minute to look around bruh what the yeah i think i might have misplaced the stuff um i am so sorry i am so sorry (laughs) but all i can say all i can say is like um wait let me try this again let me try this again pardon me i wrote this down i was more prepared give me a moment Oh, it's actually what I just read. It was First Corinthians. Um, I my apologies. I wrote First John. It's First Corinthians. First Corinthians thirteen verse eight is where we just read right now. It says, "Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, there will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away." So I'm gonna read this in the Amplified version. in the amplified version it says love never fails it never fades nor ends but as for prophecies they will pass away as for tongues they will cease as for the gift of special knowledge it will pass away um yeah i think we already kind of covered this because i didn't want to read the whole of first corinthians um i did not see it so i thought like it was something that we would enter like that was extra to it but it's not extra and that is the litmus test of love it does not fade why because it connects to number two god does not fade god does not fail and if you love someone in the way of god in the god kind of love it will not fade it's not saying that you would yes okay let me say it like this um there are situations that would allow you or rather cause for you to separate a relationship um when i mean separate i mean like um you guys go your separate paths maybe you used to talk every day but and you guys were friends but at some point you had to let go of that friendship um it does not mean that love will fade yes the friendship the connection and when i mean the connection i mean the access to each other has been cut off is the same thing when it comes to hurtful situations like traumatic um, relationships hurtful relationships as hard as it is to say this and i know like it's not an easy thing to hear it's especially when you've gone through that hurt um from someone especially as you've been in situations where you expected more from someone and they did not live up to it um but if you really love a person in the way god expects for you to love a person that love would not fade 
that love would not end because love does not is not um it does not rejoice in evil it rejoices in truth even though someone has hurt you the fact that 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 oh this is nice <laughs> it reminds me of a, of a talk that i had with one of my pastors where we were talking about him disciplining his child and he says that in everything like even in arguments and in um, situations where it's not um, like you guys are arguing or in a place of maybe tension, there should always be that underlying underlying um, feeling of love towards that person. You, you would always still want the best for that person. You would always still want that person to live in truth and not in evil. And this is also another interesting aspect of this part is that this is this is also a very uncommon thing. Sometimes we see situations where um, someone does something wrong. Let's say someone commits a murder and they come to you because you are their lover, father, friend, whatever. They come to you. And we like to do this thing, or rather, I like I sometimes see it where someone will now cover that sin and cover that evil, and then you know we'll not be calling the person ride or die. You know, this person is for you. Yeah, this person is really loves you. I that that's not love. Surprise, that's not love. If you really love a person, you would not allow them to have to for the devil to have access into their lives because hiding such a sin sin thrives in secrecy sin thrives in the dark so that thing that is hidden will most likely cause it will cause a lot of things i think like if you're really really trying to live a life that is holy and unashamed before people as well as before god um there are some certain things that would have to be cleared out and if you really love that person i'm not saying that you now go and throw the person under the bus <laughs> once again i feel like every <laughs> all the situations are very sensitive and i'm not going to just have a one formula for everything i'm not going to tell you like this is it you have to do this da, 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 da. no there's no formula to it but in everything, always remember that the God kind of love does not rejoice in evil. No, it rejoices with the truth. Um, it is kind towards that person. It wants the best for that person. And it does not fade and it does not fail. Right. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Number four is very interesting because I like how I like, I just said, you don't cover sin. Number four is love covers. <sighs> Let's go. Proverbs 10 verse 12. Proverbs 10 verse 12. Proverbs. Where you at, bro? Proverbs 10 verse 12. I hope this is also not the wrong one. Oh, nice. It's, it's correct. So Proverbs 10 verse 12, the Amplified Version, it says, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers and overwhelms all transgressions, forgiving and overlooking another's faults. I don't think I need to explain this. This is quite... Well, that was dumb of me to say I don't think I need to explain this. I literally came here to, to say that we explained this. <laughs> Um, love covers love covers by forgiving and overlooking another person's faults and I think it would still um, connect with what I was talking about as dead men don't react to certain things um, if hatred is the one that stirs up strife because when you are looking to argue with someone it's like everything is foil for you to argue with that person. Everything. The person just breathes wrong. The next thing is, why are you breathing? <laughs> <I don't... laughs> what is the truth? 
like when you're really annoyed with someone i'm saying this from my own life and experience girl like yeah if someone annoys me it's like just don't do anything next to me what what is it just no like um yeah so that is it that's something that we need to carry as 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 we walk with christ is that love covers um and now i'm just thinking of a scenario between um between peter and jesus so i'm thinking of the time that peter denied jesus three times and it's 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 jesus is amazing guys jesus is so loving because jesus knew before peter did that peter jesus knew that peter was going to deny him three times but yet he says that when you come back get your like um take your brothers along with you like go back and get your brothers as well once again paraphrasing um but that was what jesus told peter and just imagine that you are this is your friend that has been with you for three years you guys have traveled together you have done missionary work together you have seen and done so many things together you have ate, um, eaten together you have discipled him for three years and this is the same person that was you know saying jesus i would die with you and when it when the chips are down and he was in the house of um i don't know who he was i forgot him but basically he was carried there in order to be tried and in the midst of that peter is not even like in the compound but i think he has um vision towards like jesus can see him because as a third uh, uh, after denying him for the third time and the cockerel now crowed um in the morning and jesus looks to him i I was like wow (sighs) but yet jesus covered for him even before he did it he says that the devil has planned to sift you guys like wheat but i have prayed to the father man if I knew that someone was going to deny me and betray me, and that person is a really close person of me, like of mine that I love, I really do pray I act like Jesus. I really do pray I act like Jesus. I really do. Because the flesh doesn't want to do that. I will come swinging. <laughs> The flesh will come swinging, not me. I I don't do that. I speak good things over my life. I will not do that. But the flesh will want to swing. Next time we meet on sites. Bro, you denied me. What are you talking to me for? Step out. <laughs> but I think like Jesus knew the fault of Peter because this was not the first time. Then uh, the, there was also another time where Peter was like, um, not so, Lord, when Jesus was like, the son of man has to suffer these things. Peter was like, no, it's not you. Jesus had to rebuke him because it was Satan speaking through him. So then there was also another one um, where he went to go and carry a knife and swung on a person, cut the ear off clean. So, I feel like Jesus did know his people. He knew his friends. He knew, like, he is is God. He knew all those things. But in his love, he covered and, you know, forgave and overlooked Peter's faults. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the disciples as well had faults. And God's love just covered, forgave them, and overlooked them. And it, it basically that then that causes um that causes a lot of things to move better i feel like okay now i'm just i'm I'm feeling like it's coming out of my mouth a lot 
Um, but another situation would be like two persons, let's say a couple, a couple, a man and a woman, maybe one squeezes out the toothpaste from the top, another one from the bottom, and you decide to, you guys are, I'm saying like this is a couple that starts out in love, like the feeling of love, the euphoria, the excitement and everything. And then there is a constant picking. There is no overlooking in that one fault or rather that one uniqueness of the other person. This one is feeling um, angry because why are you squeezing the toothpaste from the top? This one is feeling angry because why are you squeezing the toothpaste from the bottom? As the relationship continues, if there is constant strife, constant strife, there is no overlooking, no forgiving, it's like constantly just hammering in that issue. At some point, there would be a disconnect in that relationship. At some point. Because this is a fault that is overlookable. I'm not saying that if your person used to kill people, you should overlook it. Please. Discernment. <laughs> Discernment. <laughs> discernment and wisdom in all things thank you very much and then the last one as i said all those things i think like the last one just on like in it it's com it just brings together the perfection of jesus and the love of god in a way that i i think like i i don't i don't ever want to ever understand it fully because I always want to be marveled by a new revelation about it. And number five is that love gave. John three sixteen is the scripture with that. So let's go there. John three sixteen. Yes. Ooh, amplified. Nice. It says, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as savior shall not perish but have everlasting life. (sighs) Yeah. Love gave. Love who is God, loved us so greatly that he gave. He gave in order to cover. He constrained himself. This is, oh, I like this. (laughs) I didn't even know this was like bringing everything that we have talked together in this one verse. So we said that love constrains, right? Love compels love the love of god towards us the world in the world compelled him and constrained him into flesh into a flesh-like manner so he came down the word of god came down and became like flesh so love constrained and then love was not an emotion rather it was god love is god And love came as a person. And love came as God. And this love does not fade. Because it says, if you believe and trust in him, you shall not perish. But have what? Eternal life. Eternal life is forever. It does not fade. It does not fail. The life is forever. And then love covers. He came to cover our transgressions. He came to for he came he shed his blood for the remission of sins. I honest I'm not even kidding. Like when I did this, this, this was not how I did not know that it just came all together in this verse. And then lastly, God gave. He gave himself. He gave his son. He gave his one and only begotten son. 
he gave. The love of God constrained him. The love of God covered us. The love of God never fails. And the love of God gave. Love gives. Love gives. I think like wow i am this is blowing my mind right now i'm not even kidding like this was not how this was not my mindset when i when i went through this love gave and love gives when you love someone you give them your time when you love them you give them you like not only material things but you give them your time you give them your attention you give them your prayers you know, you give to them. Love actually gives. Love is not an emotion, but it is also an action. Love is you choosing to give to someone. Wow. Wow. The love of God is amazing. The love of God is amazing. And I just pray in fact yes there's there's a verse that i want to pray over you guys as we end this it is ephesians 3 verse 18 and i just want to ask that if there is anyone that wants to reciprocate and you know come i don't know how to put it if you want to learn how to love god just as he has greatly loved you, whoever and wherever you are, I want you to just, I want you to bow your heads and I want you to believe that Jesus died. He died for you. He died because he loves you. He loves you so much. He died and he gave himself for you in order to be moved into the kingdom of his son the kingdom of his love and i just want to pray with you as you open yourself up to the love of god as you allow him to become your lord and your savior as you decide to love him every day just as he loves you every day so yeah Uh, Let me just join faith with you and pray with you as you declare, Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, who came and died for us. Out of that great love that you had for the world and for me, O Lord, you sent your Son to die for me. I accept him today as my Lord. I accept him today as my Savior, O Lord. I ask that you help me to love you. Because it's only through you that I am able to love you, O God. Heal me. Transform me. Forgive me, O Lord. I am yours. I declare that I am yours now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Like I said, there's a scripture I want to pray over every single person watching this. It is Ephesians 3 verse 18. And I pray. No, actually, I think I will start with. I think I will start with 16, 16 to 19. I pray over you guys that may God grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. And may you having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints the width, the length, the height, the depth of his love, fully experiencing that amazing endless love, and that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your entire being to all the fullness of God so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God himself. 
This I pray and I declare over you today, now and forevermore, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for watching today's episode. I It blessed me. <laughs> It blessed me. If it not bless anybody, it blessed me. <laughs> Thank God. I am I am always, always glad to have an understanding more about Jesus. And that is the whole point of this podcast. So do not forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you give your life to Christ, please leave a comment below. I will reach out to you. And, um, yeah, we can talk through more the uh, more about your journey from here on out and um, any other thing you'd like to talk about, actually. So if you're giving your life to Christ, please let me know in the comments. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Honey and Milk Podcast. You can um, leave me an email at hi.b at honeyandmilk.org. And, yeah stay blessed i will see you guys next week i love you with the love of god bye